I love this story in John chapter 4 where Jesus is busy doing ministry and his disciples come to him and they say, Rabbi, uh, you must be hungry. Please have something to eat. And Jesus replies, I have food that you know nothing about. And they start discussing, oh my goodness, did somebody secretly bring him food and when did he secretly eat? And he says, my food is to do the work of my Father. And I love that passage because I love when I'm so consumed about a task that I'm doing something so important that I forget that I'm hungry and the day has passed. And as soon as I'm finished, I love that feeling how as soon as I'm done, I realize that physically I'm starving and I can eat a lot. And uh, I hope that your life and my life could be full of those experiences when we literally forget that we're physically hungry. And uh, I want to talk more about this after the scripture reading. John chapter 6 verses 41 through 51. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, They will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Today I just want to focus on that one short and powerful statement in verse 48. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Uh, when I was in college, I, I drove with a bunch of friends to another state to watch, uh, to participate in worship when a worship leader named Marty Nystrom was leading it with Hosanna Integrity. And he shared a story of how he wrote a song called As the Deer. Uh, As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after you. Uh, you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. And he shared the story of how he was at home and he felt really bored and empty. So he went to the couch, he turned on the TV, watched a show, and he was thinking, that's not it. I still feel like something's missing. So he went to the kitchen, opened the refrigerator, made a sandwich, ate, drank something, and he's still feeling empty. That's not it. And then he went to his room where he could be alone with God and he worshipped and he felt this is it. This is what I was longing for. Now I am fulfilled. Uh, it reminds me of a quote from Blaise Pascal who said, 
inside of every one of us is a God-shaped vacuum, an emptiness in us that only God Himself can fill as revealed through Jesus Christ. Um, I remember uh, in the 90s there was a movie from China called Eat, Drink, Man, Woman. At least that was the English translation of the title. And this was before all the food networks and people loved this movie because they intricately showed this man preparing dinner and it was so it was such a labor of love and uh, I think man woman means sex so eat drink man woman uh, the point of the movie was that life all comes down to food drink and sex and there's not much else that is a non-christian worldview and um, Sadly, to people who are not Christian, who are not spiritual, that's what their life comes down to. Eating, drinking, and physical relationships. Uh, I want to read uh, from page uh, 115 from the Living Life Devotional. Scottish writer Bruce Marshall once said, I still prefer to believe that sex is a substitute for religion and that the young man who rings the bell at the brothel is unconsciously looking for God. Many men and women look to physical things to fill their heart, but nothing will fill that emptiness, that chasm, that vacuum, except God Himself. I have to admit, I love eating. Uh, my wife thinks I have a mental problem. I think it's a spiritual problem. You know, we call food comfort food and it literally comforts me. It literally, eating good food literally makes me feel fulfilled and accepted and loved and warm inside. And that's terrible because Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the only one who can fulfill you and sustain you. And uh, Jesus is the bread of life. There are no substitutes. Uh, I want to read another quote from this Living Life booklet from page 123. Uh, Pastor John Piper said, If you don't feel strong desires for the manifestation of the glory of God, it is not because you have drunk deeply and are satisfied. It is because you have nibbled so long at the table of the world. Your soul is stuffed with small things and there is no room for the great. Because you have nibbled so long at the table of the world. I remember uh, when I was younger, I loved cars. And I had all this useless information in my head. All these cars, I knew how much they cost, how much horsepower they had, uh, what the zero to sixty statistics were, how the handling was, where it was made and manufactured. And I had all this useless information and I was so passionate about it. And then I got a little bit older and I got really into motorcycles because I realized I could never afford these cars. And I had all this useless information, you know, which bikes, how much horsepower, uh, V-twin, four-cylinder, uh, CCs, zero to 60, top speed. And then I gave up on motorcycles a few years ago and now I'm at cameras. You see, you see the trend is it went from tens of thousands of dollars to thousands of dollars to hundreds of dollars. I guess that downward trend in cost is good, but now I spend way too much time on the internet learning more about cameras and camera gear. And I love talking to my friends who are into camera gear. We could talk all day, all night about useless information. And when I have a long day and I'm stressed and I sit down on my couch and I open that laptop and I start going back to those camera websites 
it makes me feel peaceful and calm and full. And it's idolatry because the one thing that I should turn to to give me comfort and peace and sustenance so that I can make it through the day and make it through the next day and the next day is Christ alone. And He said, I am the bread of life. And I encourage you to identify the idols in your life and to make sure that nothing replaces Christ, that He alone is the bread of life. When we look back on our lives, we're going to see just how foolish we were to be so caught up in all these little idols, this idol worship, this idolatry of things that feel like fulfill us and define us and help us. And early on, we need to get rid of them and worship Christ alone and make sure that He alone is the one that sustains us and fills us, that He is the bread of life. Let's pray together. Lord, forgive us for feeding ourselves on the phonies and the fakes in this world when we know ultimately You alone are the bread of life. You alone can fill us and fulfill us and make us whole. We want to turn to you completely. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.